Today on the show, I have the great pleasure to welcome Jörg Sandrock. Jörg, you're the co-founder and the CEO of Neon Bank. Welcome. Philip, thank you very much for this nice introduction. Really looking forward to be your guest today. Just one remark at the beginning. You need a license to be a bank. We don't have a license. We work together with another bank. So our name is Neon3. Well, thanks for correcting me. No, it's important because FINMA wouldn't allow us to name ourselves Neon Bank. <laughs> okay. Jörg, you started working in the Silicon Valley in the 1990s. How was that? <laughs> that was great. It was probably the best job I had at that point of time. We saw the internet hype, the first wave of cool startups at that point of time. Of course, it was companies like Google, eBay, Amazon, also companies you don't see in the market anymore, like maybe Napster or Alta Vista. It was a great time. It seems that everything could happen there. And that was clear the space at that time where you want to be somebody new who's interested in technology, want to change a little bit. Is that where you get the bug to become an entrepreneur at some point? Or is it where it started? No, to be honest. The, the idea of Neon was more or less related to the job I got there after. We were consultants for many years. I still live in Germany over the weekend. But I had a project here in the Swiss market and was surprised seeing how somehow old-fashioned, traditional, profitable and less customer-centric the Swiss retail banks are. So that was more the idea. It was not that I had the dream to become an entrepreneur and be my own boss, so to say, but rather I was surprised by the potential we saw in the Swiss market. When I hear you say surprised, you were surprised on how not customer-centric it was. Yes. Is how, that what you mean? Yes, yes in, in many dimensions. The level of competition in Switzerland was pretty low. The level of quality for retail banking was not very high. The costs are in, in, immense. And yeah, that was a big opportunity for us, I thought. You know, I can really relate to that because when <laughs> I open a bank account with one of our co-founders six years ago, yeah. they brought in us in. And they checked that we could speak German, so yes. that we could understand the documents. They were making us sign, and we had plenty of papers <laughs> to sign. And I have to admit, with you guys, I opened an account, yep. and it took me five minutes. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations. <laughs> wow. Thank you. Yes, we were the first, I think, on the legal side. The Swiss were pretty progressive. In 2016, they allowed, for instance, the so-called video and online onboarding. However, the banks didn't really apply. They weren't there new clients to come to the branch to fill out a lot of different forms that somehow covers their risks, especially when you're not have a Swiss passport, it was very cumbersome to open. So we were the first to promote that. And we also heard and learned that a lot of the banks copied our process, which is something we want to even make better next year or this year, it's 2023 now. That was the first change. Then we brought in different changes on the pricing schemes. We were pretty aggressive with pricing, but also with the transparency. That was another topic. So it was not only that the banks were pretty old-fashioned, traditional, but also very intransparent. And that's something people don't like if they really understand what's going on. How did you get that set up? Because as you corrected me initially, <laughs> you said you're not a bank. <laughs> so what are you? From the legal perspective, we have a cooperation with Hypothekaba Glensburg. They are a regulated bank. And all Leon clients also have an account with Hypothekaba Glensburg. It's also UP. It doesn't take you an hour to use UP instead of Hypothekaba Glensburg. So when you are a Leon client, have an account with UP, all your funds are protected with the security mechanisms of Swiss banks. You get there your IBAN, they connect you to the Swiss payments and all that stuff. But you have a full Neon experience. We manage the front end, we manage app development, we design the product. We also have the data of the clients because they give us the permission to get those data. And that's pretty much what we offer. Now, I don't want to be too unpleasant, but basically, Jupiter Car Lens, a bank, Lensburg, <laughs> didn't want to invest in creating an app. Uh, no, it's a complete different setting. We have a corporation, so we pay them that they manage the accounts. But on the other hand, we are fully independent of what we would like to offer, what we would like to design. Also, on the revenue perspective, when we sell products, it's our revenue, it's not theirs. On the legal setup, when you look at Sigma, of course, we more like a branch of 
Equity Car Bank, but on the on the business setup, we are completely independent. Equity Car Bank is also not one of our investors, so they are just a normal partner for us. Okay, but that's your unique partner. Yes. So you would not see several banks behind Neon. That's correct. Uh, in the Swiss market, you have only a few banks that could offer that. To my knowledge, it's more or less only Hypothek Harbank, Glensburg. Maybe others would be capable, but they are not offering it. When you look in other markets, you see that model rather, it's not unique. For instance, one big company that is maybe known for that would be Jim based Solaris Bank. There are some banks in the US offering that services. I remember when you were looking to prepare your fundraising, yep. you said, we're not going to go outside Switzerland. Yes. Is that still your plan? Yes, it is. For many reasons, of course, it would be, on the other hand, starting that maybe to say, well, cool, we want to be the most digital, most innovative bank in Europe or in the Western world. But to be realistic, on one hand, I think it's very good to understand your local market. The Swiss market, for instance, is quite unique in some of the aspects. For instance, if you have twin, you have e-builds, solid high R plus 3A. So you have unique products in the market. You have unique regulations and then the setup with the currency and all that stuff. So we will focus on the Swiss market only, yes. So you will not have any temptation to go back at some point to your native country, Germany, and say, <laughs> no, no. I want to go there too. That's a big market. <laughs> no, of course, the market is big or larger than the Swiss market, but there is also a lot of different competitors, N26, to name maybe one. So yeah, we will stick in the Swiss market because we also see that we're more successful than those companies like N26 or Revolut in the Swiss market because it is made for the clients and they appreciate that. Yeah. So I guess potential investors ask you the question, <laughs> what will you look like in five years? And for us, when you look at Neon, we have maybe different stages in the beginning. Of course, it was a question of could we get it on a technical setup? Can we develop an app that is used? Then there was a big concern in the beginning. Does the market in Switzerland really needs a new banking service? I didn't say a new bank, but new service for that. And because everyone believed, okay, Swiss people have an, a cool bank and they are not underbanked. So this was the second step that we proved wrong because we grew very nicely. And then can we scale this business model? And yes, again, we showed we can. And now the next step for us is that we want to continue with the growth in the client base. The ultimate target maybe in five years would be above 300,000 clients. And we will want to become profitable Profitability for us means we want to offer more products, new products, always in what we call the, with the neon principles. We have four of them. And that's the idea to become around 300,000 clients and profitable because for us, that would prove that we somehow kept this change and it's somehow a sustainable change of the market. You managed to raise quite some funds yes. a few months ago. Yep. Right? I think it was. 40 million or something? In the history, we raised 35 million in total. And half a year ago, we did two different topics. We collected a little money from the existing investor base. These are all Swiss companies and our VC funds that invest in us. And in addition, we raised more than 8 million from our client base. It was the second so-called crowd investment. We did one in 2021 as well. We were sold out after an hour. So this time we reserved a little bit more funds for the crowd and we raised again 8.3 million, I think it was at the end. Wow, it's great. So what are you doing with all this money? We invest, the cost base at Neon is roughly one third for HR, one third for marketing, one third for technology. And technology also has some, some HR costs involved. Again, what we want to do with the money is we want to build new products. We're going to launch now trading products and different kind of products you could trade. And after that, there are also other typical bank and non-bank products we have on our roadmap and we just invest in that and even might reduce a little bit on the marketing spend side. And that's our path to profitability. And to do all of this, how big is your team? We grew significantly in the recent years. 
when we started Neon, our first office was a shared space where we had one table and we shared that table with the three of us. And then we grew in, let's say, different phases. And for a longer time, we were below 10. Then the next level was 20. And now we are more than 50 heads. If you count the heads, also the external, there are a lot of students involved, people who work only part-time. But if you call head, it's 50. And you're all based in Zurich. Um, we have two locations. We have one location here in Zurich, which is some old fashion building. It used to be a records factory and records went out of the market. And we have a second office in Belgrade. It's technically not our office. We work with a partner here, but the IT development is located in Belgrade. It's a team of 18 working there. Dobro, dobro. <laughs> because of the Corona times, most of the colleagues we first met in summer when the whole team had some kind of audience meeting in the Belgrade and we celebrated. And I don't know if you noticed over New Year's Eve, one of the ships in Belgrade had some problems and I think we celebrated even that ship. So, but we didn't get read as, <laughs> as it sunk now. <laughs> Well, it sounds like it's a great success. I've seen a lot of my friends say, hey, you know, I'm going to Neon and <laughs> it's a good experience. You guys are on the right track for this. So you're making the banking world a bit sexy now. I wouldn't call it sexy. I'm maybe just normal. <laughs> so, and, and the way you dress is not typical for a banker. <laughs> no, that's some nice effect. When I used to work as a consultant, I had my tie and my shoes, which I find very uncomfortable. And now we dress differently. But I thought also that in the banks, people are not that strict anymore. After Corona, they got a little bit easier here. You're a successful entrepreneur. Can you tell us what were the most exciting part of building a company? What did you really like? We had a long period in the beginning where we had ideas and first implementations. And then, of course, it was a great moment to see you life and when we did our launch we had even some marketing material out in the Zurich drums and stuff like this and that morning I entered the drum actually I saw our advertisement of that wow that's something it feels good or we were featured in the Swiss Hude de Lue with the shark tank and one day we sold there or we got 2,000 new clients in a single day and we doubled more or less than the number of clients. And that was also a great moment. It's also great sometimes to see just when we are together as a team and think that those 50 brains work together. That makes me somehow happy and maybe even a little bit proud. I guess the parents and the family say, wow, you're just really <laughs> doing it. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on. I, I read on your website, it forms made you the best bank of Switzerland in 2022. <laughs> yes. That's wow. somehow, yes, but that's somehow, again, we are not a bank, so we pop that quite <laughs> that's why. funny something. I think we even got the same price one year later as well. So yeah, we wrote them a very nice statement. And there is also one Brazilian bank, also with the same name, and just made sure that they really mean us. And yeah, they reconfirmed we are, we are the best. So that's a great success. Can you tell us with other entrepreneurs and all the people out there struggling to build companies, what were your lows and if you had any lows and how did you manage to overcome them? Of course, more or less you struggle every day. I don't have a secret recipe for making companies successful. I think it's driven a little bit from the market perspective. The company you want to build or the idea you have, the solution you have, is there really some demand? Does it really help? What is maybe the economic rationale? to build that for Neon, for instance, we focus, and that's of course what the client sees on the UX, but from the economical perspective, the operating model is something where we really differentiate. We have now, as I mentioned, 140,000 clients and 50 employees, and there's no bank in the Swiss market that has a similar cost ratio. When you look at those figures, of course, there are some outliers, but that's something where you, as a founder, really want to understand now, what do I better than the existing? Is it something innovative that helps something that couldn't be solved yet? Or is it something I do just in a different way, so much more efficient or faster or better quality that I can prove 
to the market that I have something a superior solution. If you felt that, then you must orchestrate or align these ideas with the structure and the organization of your company. It sounds maybe a little bit abstract, but that should guide maybe how you want to lead your organization, how you want to incentivize people, how you want to build your own, let's say, company DNA. For instance, we are a low-cost bank. So, of course, our office is not very fancy, but on the contrary, it's quite old-fashioned. It's not a very pleasant experience here, but it somehow fits to that. And that's something you should have. On a personal level, enjoy the moments also you can learn from frustrating moments maybe yeah can you give us a concrete frustrating moment for you for instance raising money that's a little bit of the task i have as a personal role here of course you have so many turndowns or people who are not interested or may show some interest first but then they understand the model better and not interested anymore and you need some kind of um, high level of motivation to make the same pitch the 15th or 20th time to convince an investor that's something that really can frustrate you on our specific setup as we work and benefit from a very strong partner network sometimes also partners are not acting how you believe they would in terms of delivering solutions or whatsoever so that is always of course in that moment frustrating but if you can still see some improvement i think that's how I typically look at those topics. And I'm still not frustrated, but see also some positive in here. <laughs> it seems that you don't get frustrated that easily. That's just the feeling I get from talking to you. <laughs> yeah, could be. Okay, yeah. Should be nice. You just spoke about investors. Yeah. Um, how do you go about that? How do you find these investors? What do you do? For us, it was just very simple. We went on social sites, LinkedIn, and there are specific sites for venture capital we more or less generated a list. Then we took that list and wrote emails, made calls. That's how we got the first investors. And when you have some investors and there is some kind of network among them and they help you maybe, but typically it was the job of our founders team to seek new money. Yes. How much effort is that in hours, months? How much um, time did you put in there? It depends a little bit on the size what kind of investors you see, but it's more or less six months that you need preparation, addresses, pitches, talks, and you have maybe the next step that people are interested. You might need to address specific questions. And if they ultimately agree, you have a lot of legal and paperwork, and this could take sometimes also another three months. So it's quite a lengthy critical process. And for me, it was also the first time that I raised money when I started Neil, so it's always something new. But I liked it, and I would guess in the first year it was almost maybe 40% of my time that occupied fundraising. So you defy the statistics, because apparently a successful entrepreneur, most of them, it's their third company and they are above <laughs> 40. And you managed this with your first company. But I'm above 40, clearly. <laughs> so at least that's okay. I <laughs> I just would like to jump back on your salaries. I remember one thing you said when I was at your conference okay. when you were doing some fundraising. You said we have a low cost base and you also mentioned your salaries. Actually, you guys are not that well paid. Yes, um, we are very transparent in the company. We share more or less all information. We share not client-specific information, but everyone in the company has access to all our data warehouses and stuff like this. Salary is the only exception. We are not transparent with the salary of everyone, but for the founders, our salary is 100,000 Swiss francs, which is, um, from one perspective, pretty high, which is, on the other hand, since most of us are quite experienced founders and after a certain age, we have maybe a certain level. Yeah, and for the Swiss market, if I just may add something yeah. for viewers, it's <laughs> not that a top high end a salary. Yeah. 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 Especially when you compare it with banks, I find that somehow part of this system get really out balanced so you took a salary cut by creating your own company yes definitely yeah that was but you still have also in the in the beginning when we started Nian, we didn't pay out a salary i think for a year almost so yeah still happy <laughs> yeah i've been there 
I know what you mean. <laughs> okay. So before you mention UX, I have to admit, I tried a lot of different banks, the Revolut okay. and the likes. And when I created an account on Neon, I ended up in the app and I was like, is that all? I mean, basically okay. I could get money in, get money out and very yes. simple, very yes. straightforward, no big features about new things. Yes. I was even thinking, oh, I, I was puzzled. Yes. Is that your intention or how does that work? Mm -hmm. I think it's a, quite a difficult question, to be honest, or a question where we spend a lot of time and must spend even more. What I said in the beginning, we want to add new products, is something that typically tries complexity also for the client. And on the other hand, it is very simple and it's no big functionality, but it also makes us simple in a positive way. Other companies like Revolut, for instance, they add features make the app super complex and then they have a team that develops makes it simple in typically six months time when you look at those apps it's really like in ways they had new currency trading they add new other features you don't find anything anymore and after three to six months with the user data they make it simple again we don't have the funds for that so for us we cannot afford to launch a solution and then improve it over six months, but rather spend more time on making the solution relevant and simple in the beginning. So for me, this is quite a challenge how we can succeed here. You have the concept of maybe personalization in terms of maybe you are a very sophisticated client. You want to see all the functionality you have and all the products we could so you can opt in or we could opt out on some of it. For instance, we launched Spaces. Spaces means it's sub-account functionality. At least more than 100 clients started to complain, now it's getting too complex for me. On the other hand, oh. it was the feature that people, no, it was the highest ranked feature of our clients. So it's always quite difficult. And that is not a very simple answer to that question, how to keep simple on one hand and easy to understand, but also to offer more products. What about security? Because I have to admit, I installed the app on my phone yep. and now it just sees me. I look at the app and I'm in my yep. account. How do you handle security? What you described is the locking mechanism. We support Face ID or whatever it was. When you want to transfer money, you need an additional number. So also here, we have the trade-off between convenience and security. And from my perspective, we're more on the secure side. You need a separate PIN. When you do a transaction, you need other figures and card details are hidden and stuff like this or you can have a somehow a mode where the amounts are not shown on the cyber technology part since we are compared to other banks quite modern we have a secure setup so far we haven't had any security breaches we have different programs in that area we have internal external programs to ensure security and so far we haven't had any issues here do you have maximum that you can put on, on the accounts? We have limits when you want to transfer it away, card limits and transfer limits, but there's no max technically on the account. I think we once okay, had so clients that really want to put a lot of money in, not only in my dimension, a lot of money, but probably in everyone's dimension who's listening to that. And then the bank starts some normal process asking where's the money from, what kind of money is it? But yeah, that was one, only one certain case. And what is the limit you can take out of a bank account at once? You can transfer money on a single day of 50,000 Swiss francs and you can do card transfers. I'm not sure about it. And in a monthly, the limit is 20,000 and on a daily, I think it's 5,000. But maybe you go on our website and double check. Because we have some limit discussions, so it sounds stupid, but I'm not aware of the actual limit, but we want to change that a little bit. So we are in discussions right now. I have some other tricky questions. <laughs> Please <laughs> shoot. No, I would like to ask you, what about training? How do you train your team? The team is pretty young. People that work for Neon, they could work at other companies, maybe other banks. They have decided to work for Neon and because they are somehow maybe identify themselves with the team stronger. We had a discussion and also made some survey. It's quite interesting to see that the team 
is less driven by the idea to change the market, but rather like the team. That's the most important, that the, our culture we are said to be quite open compared to other banks. So for most of those guys, you don't need a specific training in terms of today we talk, teach you about compliance or stuff. My colleagues from operations, of course, when we launch new products, they need to be trained to answer questions around it. And that's something our COO, Patrick, typically does in his regular session. Most of the teams, we have a daily call and in the product team, we have a weekly and these are typically then the touch points where you do the training. You do this as discussions on video calls or do you do this in person, in the office? We ask people to be in the office three days a week, typically from Tuesday to Thursday. There might be exceptions, but that's the typical way. You have always somebody who's at home or who's not present in the office. I think in 2022, we agreed also that we have three days in the office. When you have some people out, do they first do online training on learning management systems or only in um, Zoom sessions? We do a lot of training on the job when you're new with a NIA. And for instance, working in operations, then we have some kind of internal program the first six weeks. Those do the very simple tickets that is maybe only product related, not specific issue from a certain client. Just can I onboard when I'm in Germany or something that no, we can't, unfortunately. Stuff like this. After three, six weeks, they get then certain areas of expertise in the product, maybe card first, then the account onboarding. And this is always training on the job with a supervisor or a senior who helps you. That's the most efficient way for training. For developers, it's also similar, but of course a different logic, but they also start with more simple tickets and then they work up to the level of complexity. Also something we learned in growing Neil that we have now different areas of expertise in the beginning for instance a call center agent was needed to know everything also a developer needed to be able to develop everything now in the tech side we have two and we'll have three different teams based on a functional domain and the same applies for, for operations where we distinguish okay. between card onboarding and others yeah. we've heard a lot about the metaverse so are we going to see Neon in the metaverse in the years to come? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Why not? Uh, honestly, I don't know much about the metaverse. We still have so much potential in the real life changing the Swiss market. I don't see for us much potential opening something there. I think some of the Swiss banks even opened a branch. I've heard quite expensive sometimes and it's nothing where we can get the next hundred thousand dollars, I would say. What about cryptocurrencies, the famous blockchain? Are you going to take cryptos on Neon at some point? Yes, most likely. I'm personally quite skeptical. I think the technology somehow, I was aware of it, I think 20... 12 or something, never invested anything. Some of my friends or colleagues invested in cryptos and they stopped working maybe, I don't know. But we might offer some investment possibility, but also here in a very secure setup, probably also very limited functionality, nothing, no staking or stuff like this. So it's very simple crypto trading and that's something we have on our roadmap, yes. Okay, so a simple crypto wallet. Yes. What about artificial intelligence? We now speak a lot about chat GPT. Everybody speaks about this around the world. Are you going to use that? Do you already use any of that? We don't use it. It would be very interesting for us because when you scale or grow your business model, you must ensure that the processes are efficient and that we cannot scale also the customer care team in a linear way. So it is a very interesting technology for us. We took a look at chatbots before that hype and decided that it was not relevant at that point of time. But it is one of the topics my colleagues from our data team and product and operations built some kind of working group and look at the potential areas where we could apply it. Even on our tech colleagues, I think it's a relevant topic as far as I understood it to get some codes or helping when they do software engineering. But it is something we have on our roadmap that haven't made much progress yet. 
I can hear a door opening. So that's probably oh, soon sorry. at the time for your next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> that was a perfect transition for okay. me to start <laughs> coming to the end. I'm sorry. <laughs> now I <laughs> ruined it. <laughs> that was a thing. I know where I'm is. <laughs> All right. I have no other topics. I enjoy our discussion, by the way. I'm Thank sure you very much. We could talk about many things. But we've covered a lot, so let's wrap up. That's been a great pleasure. Thanks a lot for all these insights in your great company. What can we wish you for the next years to come? That our plans will materialize. <laughs> all right, that's cool. <laughs> so may you plan materialize. Thanks a lot for your time. I know you have a next meeting after that. So thank you very all much the best. for your interest. You take care. Thanks. Bye bye. <laughs>